Uh, welcome everyone to the L7C podcast wrestling edition. For the first time ever, we are doing the wrestling podcast live. Uh, we got the wrestling expert Jacob Mason with us. How are you doing today, man? I am fantastic. I am finally made it here to Columbus to uh, for the podcast and also go to a con. So I'm pretty excited. And we have the captain, Byron Mitchell, with us. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, I am doing great. Like Jacob said, it's about to be a great weekend. Boys, there was a lot of history made these past couple days. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's start off with Survivor Series. Did you enjoy it? I did. It was a great effort put on by WWE. I enjoyed all the matches. So I'll give it probably I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Jacob? I, I did enjoy it. It was uh, full of surprises, you could say. Uh, <laughs> but it, all in all, it was a really good, really good pay-per-view. I was happy with it. One of the first, the first match was the War Games match. Uh, you had Damage Control versus Team Charlotte, Becky, uh, Bianca, and Shotzi. Uh, the faces went victorious. Did the right team go over there? No, I think Damage Control should have won. Uh, since definitely since EO is the champion, they should have had her go over in the match. I don't think they had Bianca's team win, so Bianca can continue her feud for the women's championship. Um, but other than that, I think Damage Control definitely should have won. Jacob. Yeah, I I gotta agree with Byron here. I I think Damage Control should have got the win, didn't get the win, but honestly, I mean, to start out the show, it was a very solid, very fun, Mm -hmm. very exciting match. Uh, EO Skies, whole little trash can, kamikaze dive thing off the top of the cage. That was sweet. That was cool. And I normally hate those spots because everyone just... Stands there and just like <laughs> watches. And you're like, oh man, are they going to jump? I better catch them. I've never understood, but I, it looked, it did look good. I was a fan of that. Yeah, I think my only thing is like with Byron, it's like Eo's the champ, so you got to make her strong. I know she got the spot, but her team lost. I would say the MVP of the match was Bailey from a character perspective. She mm-hmm. was taking the hits for everyone. She took the pin. And now she's probably going to get kicked out as we have SmackDown playing in the background. <laughs> yeah, so if that happens, yeah. you definitely will hear it first from us. <laughs> yeah, because it might happen during this podcast. <laughs> that would be a first also for us. Something something live. That it we would. Could talk about. It would. It would. Still, here's to praying that sometime next year they announce SummerSlam in Cleveland. Because then you can get the whole L7C wrestling live spectacle yeah we know. what was the next match was it was it gunter i think it was either gunter or miz or um let's look here i'm forgetting that or a santos and a dragon lee oh we can while jacob's looking through we can talk about santos and dragon lee real quick byron did you like that match i did two high flyers two up-and-comers um you know santos Turned on Rey Mysterio. He was originally supposed to face Carlito, but the SmackDown before, he literally beat up Carlito and injured him, so they had to find a replacement, so Dragon Lee stepped up. Um, I think it was a great match. I believe Santos won, so that further uh, solidifies him as a heel against the LWO. So we'll see what happens um, with that. I'm excited to see him and Rey Mysterio go at it. Yeah, so... Technically, the Gunther match was the next match, but we're on the Santos match. Go back. Um, but we completely missed talking about the comeback of the year. Our truth. Our truth is back. Our truth he is back. <laughs> He's awesome. But no, uh, that that Santos match was good. That's damn good. Yeah, and. Just to go back, our truth, man, his just his comedic timing second mm-hmm. to none. Yeah, and it's, yes. and it's also like longevity because he'll he'll never be champ. He'll never be the main champion. Never. 
never have, never will be. But the guy is just so entertaining. There'll always be a place for him. I mean, oh, yeah. you go. I mean, I know you guys have all been to live shows. I, I've seen R Truth, I don't know, three, four times now. It doesn't matter. He comes out. He's he gets a massive pop. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to chant "What's up?" I'm okay. chanting "What's up?" <laughs> Absolutely. Like you got you got to give it to R Truth. Longevity. That guy knows what he's doing. And with the Dragon Lee, and you said Escobar, he San- wants Santos. I believe Santos. Yeah, Santos. Santos want. I think it was the right move. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And then you had Miz versus Gunter. Uh, it's no secret the L7C podcast is very pro Gunter. Miz, this was one of his best matches in what years? Oh, easily. Yeah, I can't think of his outside of this match. I can't think of like the last time he had put on a caliber match like this. Could it be quasi his best match ever? I think that or the match with him and uh, Dolph Ziggler for the IC title. Ooh, that yeah, was, yeah, that, that was, was a damn good one. Dude, they put on a clinic. This mm-hmm. is, in my opinion, this was my match of the night. I absolutely love this match. I mean, it was false finishes. Mm-hmm. Everything you could want in a match, it was there. I absolutely loved it. Super hard hitting too. Like Miz going up and chopping Gunther, mm. dude. Mm. And you're just like, oh no, dude, what are you doing? And then Gunther does what Gunther does and takes it, <laughs> takes it, and then just gives <laughs> gives one hell of a receipt back. It's awesome. Oh, someone is getting their ass beat on SmackDown. That'd be Butch. Butch. Butch is getting, getting beat, beat up. up by, um... Is it pretty pretty deadly? Yeah, good for them. No. Yeah, I agree, man. Just total clinic. Doesn't look like there's an end in sight for Gunter. Um, and then the Miz, I guess, showing everyone that he's still a top performer. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So then, what was next? Then Rhea. We have yeah, Rhea. Yeah. Yeah, Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Stark. When are we gonna get a match where we actually think Rhea may lose? <laughs> when they get if, better women on Raw. <laughs> if you look at her dang feuds for the title, majority freaking Natalia, and then it's like, what are we doing? Yeah, honestly, I, I think if WWE was smart, they would get that uh they bring that one girl to face Rhea. The, she's from Calgary. I think she's related to Bret Hart and <laughs> that Jim the Anvil guy. Natalia, I just yeah. feel like they could just Possibly put on like a three year clinic of like that's all they have to do. Yeah. But that's what God. they've been doing. I mean, I know. That's... Like Zoe Stark, come on, man. No yeah. disrespect, but you're you're not you're not gonna win. Yeah, no. Did any did any other No. Like I didn't even see anyone in like the internet wrestling community being like, Oh yeah, Zoe Stark, let's go. It's like eh. Can we talk about how during that uh pay per view uh Corey Graves was talking about betting odds? Yes. It's like Zoe starts at negative yeah. five. And I was sitting with but I was like, where is he getting these from? <laughs> right? I'm, yeah, I'm trying to bet. <laughs> Which, I like it though. It, I, I, do. I think that makes it feel more legitimate. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, because UFC pay per views. Mm-hmm. That's You see that in the beginning and during the match and then live odds during the match and everything else. Like, that's legit. I love that. He's not more often WWE. I, I think that's a great thing to keep. I just thought uh, I was so shocked. I was like, what is right? What's happening? Um, was that the last match before War Games? Yeah, uh, that was it was a short match pay per view. Yeah, that was it. Remind me of like of the NXT shows where it's like only five matches that you get like the meat and potatoes of wrestling. Oh, but the person running it is Triple H. Triple H. Yeah. But that that's what we did. We all I think we all said this is a good pay per view. And that's that's what we want. Mm-hmm. The, you nailed that perfectly on the head. This is the old, feels like old NXT. Here's five. Here's five matches. Do your best. Yeah, I agree. Um, Survivor Series War Games. It was Cody, Seth, Main Event, Jay Uso, Sami Zayn, and they played up the whole night. Have you heard from Randy? Have you heard from Randy? Like, I don't know. He's going to be here. We got to go out there. Yada, yada, yada. First, um, what the hell are their names? Judgment Day. Judgment Day. Day. Yeah, Judgment Day. I was like, 
I was thinking of J.D. McDonough. I was like, what's your team's name? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Santos on the TV now, but there was an interesting spot there at the very beginning where they were beating up on everyone and Rhea came out, bring the briefcase out, and I was like, I've never seen that before. Yeah. Someone cashing in during the war games. I, I yes. thought that was legit. I was like, oh, sh- shit, Seth might lose his title right now. <laughs> and then you still continue the match. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I would have, dude. That would have been awesome. I I wish that would have happened. I was popping for that. That was that was different. Yeah, I had to stand up. My eyes were like, "Is this really about to happen?" But then, right before the cash in, Randy Orton's music goes, gets a huge pop. Randy's huge coming pop. back almost two years. Yeah, didn't think he'd come back because of that fusion surgery he got, but mm-hmm. looked fantastic. Didn't look like he lost a step. Did you know? The normal stuff he does, but it was a good match. I mean, faces went again. Faces won both war game matches, yeah, which is unusual. Yeah. Unusual? Because um, last year, I think you had both heel mm. uh, teams win. Because I know Bloodline won, but I forget who was on the, the women's team that won last year. Or maybe it was Team Becky. Because I know she was a face in it last year. But I great match, Randy Orton, huge pop. Um, Real quick, you said last year how Bloodline was the main event. There was no Bloodline this year. Nope. No solo. No um. Jimmy. No Jimmy. Jay. No Roman. Well, Jay's not. Yeah, Jay's not part of it anymore. anymore. He told Randy Orton he ain't a part of it because he doesn't want his ass whooped. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you you bring up a really good point with both face teams winning, mm-hmm. which I think more importantly than both face teams winning, the teams that were. You have the Judgment Day, mm-hmm. and then you have Damage Control. You have two already pre-made set teams, mm-hmm. and both of them lost to the made-up. Yeah, I didn't like that ragtag yeah. team. I don't like that. I don't like that either. Uh, we were talking about the face teams winning against winning. preset teams. I thought uh, Judgment Day should have won, but Randy Orton coming back. It's oh yeah, that's sealed it for. Yeah, it's hard to say. Oh, Randy's yeah. coming back. You're gonna lose Randy. But, well, I mean, I I would like, say I more. Get it. But Judgment Day is still. I would say more. Obviously, Randy coming back was big, but I would also say they are very cautious in making sure Cody Rhodes gets no L's. Like if you look at since he's come back, he's had one single loss to Brock, which was BS. Mm -hmm. He lost the tag titles when him and Jay won out of nowhere, which made no sense. Yeah, to Judgment Day. Like they make sure like he doesn't have L's. Yeah. For what's potentially down but the road. The whole Randy Orton thing, I think they could have easily, because we talked about it in the last podcast, they could have easily had Randy technically lose the match, but have it him be the cause of yeah, we losing did. the match. We which did. I think, I still think that should have happened. Yeah, and we thought him RKO and Jay, that would have been, mm-hmm. and then he walks out on him. Because, I mean, Drew McIntyre. He said it. it makes sense. Like, why are you guys friends with this dude? This guy has been part of a group who's caused us hell for three years now. Yep. He's the reason you don't have a title. You don't have a title. I don't have a title. Yeah. And I mean, Randy came back said the same thing. He's coming for the bloodline, which we talked about for years. Storylines making sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, Drew hates the bloodline. Why wouldn't he? Randy hates them. Why wouldn't he? So... I mean, Cody needs to start showing some more hate for them, too, because if it wasn't a solo spike, he would have been champ. That definitely would have been champ. Yeah. Facts. So. But then, I mean... Before you get to that, mm-hmm. what you're about to say, um, I did enjoy the RKO spot where basically Sammy and Cody threw JD oh, off the top of the They sacrificed him to an RKO. That was, spot was amazing. It was crazy. They all did the vintage Orton yeah, as Michael Cole, Orton, which last year they all did the Sheamus, the beat yep. thing. Yep, that's a great point. Yeah, so that's a really good point. Which, in respect to their OGs, and you know, I, I always make fun of them on this podcast, but Finn Balor, Light, the Great Value, JD McDonough, <laughs> I actually liked him in this match. I thought he did a re- mm-hmm. actually like really good job. He took the sacrifice. He, he took the sacrifice like. He knew his job and he did it very well. And good job, buddy. Good job. Yeah. So then, you know, all five of them are hands held, raised, all that. Survivor Series is over. Mm-hmm. The little thing comes at the bottom right corner, oh, you no. know, telling you the paper is yeah. over. 
Michael Cole's done talking, so you're like, all right, shit's over, time to turn off the TV, and then you hear the music. Shh. Yep, you hear that, and then you thought a bomb went off. <laughs> I I literally was just like, I was like, all right, that's a good match, you know, gonna yeah. close up, time to go to sleep. That sh- sh- went off, I almost fell out of my chair. I was like, there's no way. It was literally in the middle of, like, making up a text for you guys. Mm-hmm. Being like, see, no punk. I was like, li- <laughs> no, see, and sh- sh- I'm like, sh- son of a bitch. Damn it. But then you're like, nah, they've messed with people. Maybe right. they're messing with people. And then he walked out, and I was just like. He walked out. I was like, oh, my God. You know, oh, my God. I, I was. Part of me was hoping it was going to be like Paul Heyman walking out. They've yeah. done that before in Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> <they have. laughs> Just to piss I, people off. I would have loved it. I, I can't lie. I couldn't believe it. I, I'm yeah. still, I still can't believe it. Like I was literally speechless. Like that's a Jackson, our group chat, and then our other group chat. I was like, I'm speechless. Like I, one, didn't believe it was like the rumors were true. I didn't see it coming. Like I thought he. Well, those hated. rumors were dead. Yeah. Like they were they weren't like they were just rumors. They weren't real. Like fast forwarding. Triple H said at the press thing, this came about a week ago. True. And like when you hear the reports, like which we're gonna go into the other stuff that happened after that when Punk came out. Triple H told everyone in Gorilla to get out. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm just gonna run this thing by myself. Michael Cole didn't know what to say, because that's why he didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Like he said straight up, only him and Nick Khan knew. I mean that's a that's that way to keep a leak from Adam. that's how you keep secrets yeah like to hide that type of secret in 2023 where we get leaks all over the place like right. like the first time he came to aew oh like, we all knew everywhere. we oh, all yeah, knew he's coming to that was tony AEW. khan was telling he's like you're not someone's coming back yeah. <laughs> that was massive but everyone was there for it like everyone, oh yeah we knew it was coming everyone was expecting it everyone was excited Every ESPN's covering it. Mm-hmm. Literally, everyone's covering it. This though, it's it's this is on next level because mm-hmm. he started hitting things, and then everything was perfect. Like I even had to look. I was like, were the people he hugging like they're random fans? Mm-hmm. And the random fans shine because CM Punk's like, whose town is this? And that fan hold him's like Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> right. I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> okay, let's probably my favorite part of his return. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that because I. I don't think a lot of people noticed it, but me and my wife are laughing really hard at this. Mm-hmm. The guy, the Chicago, yeah. that guy, did you see his phone go flying when she unplugged through his arms? <laughs> no, I didn't see that. <laughs> the dudes over here just screaming Chicago, we Chicago! <laughs> phone gets absolutely I mean, yeeted into the next bro, town. He had one time to become viral, and he nailed he it. He nailed it. Oh. <laughs> what? Come on. You nail on the head. Let's, let's talk viral. What was it? 1.3 million views within 30 minutes or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then 31 million within 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Holy shit. And you talked about um, every news station covered it. Mm-hmm. All my betting, like FanDuel, everything. BBC News, there's a fucking war going on. <laughs> and they stopped their thing to say CM Punk makes dramatic return. This is BBC fucking news. CNN yeah. talked about I'm like... What is happening? <laughs> CM Punk's a big name. Well, do you want to talk about talk about viral? CM Punk now has the most liked tweets in WWE and AEW history. When he came back today, most liked tweet WWE ever. Just think about it, the Rock just came back two months ago. Yeah, John Cena came back. <laughs> and then CM Punk, yeah, when he first came back, AEW most liked tweeted AEW history. Now most liked tweet in WWE history. That's Damn. nuts. That, that's wild. Yeah. And no one said a word, and then you just saw him there, and then the show ended. But the show didn't end, because, of course, everyone has a smartphone. Shit was going down after! (laughs) And that is with the world world heavyweight champion, Mm -hmm. Seth Rollins. First, the picture of him sitting on the steps, (laughs) like when Punk's music came, I was just like, aw, he knows. As the great um, Iron Sheik would say, God rest his soul. It's time to give up that title, Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> I, someone tweeted it like that, and I was like, God, this this is the... Like, it's time to give up that title, Bubba. It, it's it's curtains. And yeah. then he's sitting there sad. I'm like, that's a great meme. And then Punk's up there, and then Seth is getting mad again, and he's like, fuck you, fuck you. And this starts flipping off. We're like, 
fuck is this thing? Is this shoot? Is this work? But then Drew leaves pissed off. He, I'm like, is this shoot? Is this work? Like Rhea's flipping him off. Yeah, Rhea's, Rhea's flipping off punk. <laughs> like what the hell? Drew McIntyre's punching lockers in the back. <laughs> Locks still in his trunks. And for I mean, especially this time, I mean, Seth just called Phil a cancer like a couple of months ago. Like, yeah. Jacob, what you think of? Seth and Drew and re- like those reactions because I've never seen if it's a work fantastic I love it but I've never seen him like work that hard like he looked like, really mad Dude, it, it, yeah this is the if it's a work this is the best work too is it work shoot I think it's work because he he does have issues with him yeah I, I listen you can't plan months ago calling Phil Brooks an absolute cancer and how I never want to see you again in the WWE. And not know he's coming. And then not know he's not coming Ooh. because then you have the whole AEW brawl for all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you have the I'm back, and then we have the brawl for all part two, those jungle boy. <laughs> and then we have Daniel Bryan saying, All right, we're done. Which is also a crazy thing. We didn't talk, we just found out that Daniel Bryan was basically the head of that disciplinary board that Fired he was the one who basically him. fired him. He's like, Tony, we got to fire him. Which is crazy that we talked about a month ago that Tony trusts Daniel. Like, if Tony, unfortunately, like, passed away soon, Daniel's probably going to be in charge of AEW. You think we still have, like, a weekly special announcement? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. I think he would do that. But, man, I just... Like, the Seth thing, I just kept watching. I'm like, is this real? Because this is happening off air, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, and it was different angles too. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just the, it wasn't just one. It was multiple angles. Literally, him going from the back side of the ring to the front side of the ring, getting held back, not even carrying his own title back. Mm-hmm. Corey Graves is carrying it for him. Yeah, mm-hmm. all while he's still cussing the wind. And then you see Randy, who he's just a go, just sitting in his chair, just like waving up to Punk. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just crazy because, like, like you said, Jacob. I think the biggest thing is why I thought it was real is because none of them knew. Mm-hmm. Like, so you basically said "f you" to you guys winning. I'm back. It has very Ronda Rousey vibes showing from the Royal Rumble. From the yeah. Royal Rumble, uh, that it feels. Very much like that. But you want to talk about Survivor Series. They also broke every Survivor Series record, gate, viewership, all that stuff. But it, legitimately, because we're, we're serious about this guy. R-Truth, Randy Orton, and CM Punk all came back on the same show. And was... Triple H just go to it for that. Which I actually wanted to, that's actually a good point. I wanted to bring that up with, obviously, we all know his entering career, King of Kings, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, the creator of NXT. What are you doing as COO? Then he had a heart attack. Then wrestling started to suck. Then he came back. But everything combined, do we really have to like start putting Triple H and he's the greatest of all time? I've been starting to. I've been thinking the fact that he got Punk back was the problem. Like, is Triple H the greatest of all time? I think does. You don't have to say is he the greatest, but does he have is he in the con- discussion now? Like officially, like I mean, we all would say you know Taker, Stone mm-hmm. Cold, stuff like that. But it's yeah. like they never did this. And if you look at Triple H's track record since he made NXT, I know there's a lot of these people we cause I don't like whatever, but it's still big deals. He got Ultimate Warrior back. Mm-hmm. He got Goldberg back. Mm-hmm. He got Bruno Sammartino back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He obviously got CM Punk back. When his father-in-law fired his crew, he brought them all back. Mm-hmm. He got EO, he got um EO back. He got Dakota Kai back. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have really started to think. I was like, is Triple H actually the real like goat of all time? I think he's definitely in the discussion outside of his ring work, like him building NXT, like. Black and gold, which we all love, was just amazing. And then, Byron, outside of Trish and Lita, how many NXT homegrown people are the greatest women wrestlers of all time? Sasha. Okay. Charlotte. Okay. Bailey. Okay. 
Becky. Okay. <laughs> Oscar. Who signed Oscar? Triple H. He you just in... named five. Yeah. Five out of the top ten. Yeah. And we excluded Trish and Lita, so that's seven. So if you had three more spots, who would they be? I know we we actually did this episode. Check it out. But mm-hmm. just Alexa, we put Alexa on there. Okay. NXT. China. I or I had China. Yeah. In which there. wasn't which wasn't Triple H's partner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I I yeah China's a good one. Oh, what are the other two we had on there? Uh, Mickey James. Mickey James. Mickey James. Yeah. So we have three out of. Of Trish, Lita, China, four out of ten right now who are not NXT. Yeah. yeah. And if we have like one more spot, I mean, I mean, 50, 50% of your top ten women's wrestlers of all time are NXT. Yeah. yeah. And one was yeah. imported who he signed. Yeah. He got Kevin, he got Kevin Owens the Sami Zayn. Yeah. All the people from NXT. He, he worked Shinsuke. on the AJ Styles deal. Yeah. Shinsuke. That was huge. Shinsuke was huge. Yeah. AJ. Yeah. The Good Brothers. I mean, Package take, deal. Yeah, t- yeah, take that. I uh, mean, FTR. Finn Balor. Finn Balor. Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano. Tommaso, Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> Seth. I mean, oh yeah, the whole shield. The whole shield, yeah. Samoa Joe. I mean, he was getting these people. Obviously, when he was hot, Bobby Roode. Mm-hmm. Oh, glorious. Alistair Black. Man, Keith Lee. Keith Lee, Andrade. Like, we could just keep him. And he Bobby got Murphy. <laughs> He basically, the whole current generation, what the fuck, Logan Paul's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, not this guy. <laughs> well, I guess he called to do that too, but whatever. But that's why I really started to think, I was like, is he the greatest? Because he's, he's cultivating all of this talent that is the face of stuff. Yeah, it's crazy when you put it like that. Because I mean, like, we forgot one, Bianca. Well, I was oh. leaving, I was leaving oh, the yeah, next yeah. gen. Okay, okay, okay. okay. It's technically, we just named all black and gold. If yeah. you want to go next gen, then you have like Bianca, oh, yeah. Rhea. Yeah. I mean, even though they're gone now, the Iconics. Um, mm-hmm. you just can keep going. Yeah. yeah. He got Pete Dunn. Hunter. The, the whole NXT UK brand. Yeah, the whole NXT yeah. UK brand. Tony, Tony Storm. Tony Storm when she was NXT. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which, so that's why I've really started to think. I'm like, is he the greatest? If you put everything together. If you put everything together, you can make a very valid argument yes. for it. I think if you just did wrestling-wise, eh? Yeah. If you just do backstage-wise, I, I, mean, eh, I can see that, maybe. But you combine them both, like, you should. That's and like, also from, I mean, we, we know, I mean, back then, Golden Shovel, Triple H. But for that to change to what is he is now... Mm-hmm. And he puts his and he has Sean running NXT like, mm-hmm. and we all talked about it like when he came back, morale was reported. It just went up through the roof. Yeah, like the decisions, the people bring him back. Yeah, um, I joke. I mean, obviously, Dragon Ball for Mitch said we were like a roster update thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, we were. But now, kind of what Phil Phil Burke's coming back. We're almost like a CM Punk roster update thing. Dude, we just had right. our podcast a couple months ago about the rise and fall of Punk. Yeah. <laughs> we're the rise again. Dude, that yeah. rise again. I mean, dude, I mean, the, at the end of the day, I mean, that dude has to have a book. He has to write a Phil book. or Triple H? Both. But like Phil specifically right now. The rise and fall and the rise and fall and rise and fall. Yeah. With the rise wow. and the other fall. Yeah, I could totally, like, damn. Phil's the one that really put it in my head. I was like, Triple H is the greatest because all of the shit Phil Brooks has said about that man. Oh, God. From the pipe bomb in 11 to the walkout saying, you need me at WrestleMania. I don't need you. Like, Mm -hmm. all the shit he said about it. For him, Triple H to still talk to this dude face to face. and be like, all right, let's figure something out. And he made the call. Him and Nick. So that's why I'm like, this dude is... It's crazy because I, I couldn't see full time wrestler Triple H doing that. No. Oh God, no. <laughs> I don't, absolutely not. I also oh. don't think it happens if Vince McMahon is still. That is one hundred percent true. And I also wanted to bring up with Triple H too was like we talk about all the groups he's done. I mean, Evolution. He is the one who picked Randy and Dave, mm-hmm. and he got Rick out. Yeah, because they wanted uh, the other guy before Mark Dave. Gender. Yeah, yeah. Gender and they said, "Oh, Triple H said, oh hell no.'" <laughs> right, <laughs> and that became the right choice. Obviously, Batista 
great in wrestling, going to be a future Hall of Famer. He's doing great in movies. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, he's part of that. DX. Mm -hmm. He was one who had to eat shit and like it, too, for the click stuff, for the curtain call. Like, you just add all that stuff together. Still probably the, I mean, greatest return for, I mean, the Madison Square Garden return. Like, that's still my favorite one to watch on YouTube. That's why I'm really sitting here like, this is this is nuts. He really might be the goat. And talking about someone else, because she posted a video of her getting back in the ring, and Bailey retweeted, and some other AEW people like, "Hey, come here." If he gets Sasha Banks back, oh. yeah, yeah, I will say he's great at mending fences. So if yes. anybody can get a Sasha back, it's definitely him. Now that Vince is gone, I think we're leaving someone out. Not want... Tessa Blanchard. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not, we're not, AJ? No, no, no. If we're going to talk about Triple H mending fences, being the GOAT, making mm-hmm. making the comebacks, mm-hmm. if we can get Phil Brooks, CM Punk, versus Ryback <laughs> in a WWE <laughs> ring, I will GOAT that man so hard. <laughs> Dude, at this point, oh, if we can make that happen, I'll, I'll say... Nothing but nice things about Triple H. Right back, doubled. At first, he's like, if CM Brunk shows up tonight, I'm going to retire. Mm-hmm. And then people are like, oh, Triple H is going to get him back. So if Ryback right can retire, then Ryback's right like, oh, I meant if he goes back to AEW. Lying ass. <laughs> but uh, there's just so many people. Phil Brooks, obviously, I mean, CM Punk brought up AJ on mm-hmm. Monday. Huge pop. Because that's the first time we've heard of AJ's name in like 10 years. So it, it it's just crazy that they were able to do it. And, like, I agree, if Vince had final say, hell no. Hell no. But now with going back to if it was a shoot or work or whatever, I think it was a work, but there is some shoot thing that you didn't tell everyone that, hey, we got CM Punk back. Knowing what just happened, especially your top dudes. Yeah, I think he should have told them, but also... It would have leaked then. Right, but then, like, the visceral reaction of him coming back, you wouldn't have had that. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Now, on the flip side, what I said, I was like, what the hell do you think Tony Khan was thinking that night? Because you know his mentions were blowing Mm -hmm. up. Which my thing, we bitch about this with WWE, but now I see why they do it. Why the fuck does CM Punk not have a non-compete clause? That's true. You know what? He just got fired three. Like, bro, come on. You you did it for WWE. But at the same time, like, part of me, like, the the actual the Jacob Mason, the human being, mm-hmm. not the, the wrestling guy here, mm-hmm. I'm good with that. Hey, we're not going to pay you. We're, you're done. Go do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Good with that. Let it ride. Hey, the wrestler, the wrestling person in the pond? wrestling side of me it's like bro you gotta vince mcmahon the shit <laughs> <laughs> you gotta lock these people down absolutely not what are you thinking tony it's but, just i couldn't have like it's the fact that that happened while the same night obviously collision was already over which is his show which mm-hmm. was made for cm punk and i'm just sitting here like what the hell is AEW about to do like I have a special announcement on Wednesday. (laughs) But I think, because people bring this up, grass isn't always green on the other side. Was he that fed up with AEW that he was willing to go? Like, that's why I was like, no way he goes back to WWE. AEW could not have opened his eyes that bad that it was getting ran shittily backstage for him to be like, you know what? I'll come back. I mean, he said he's not here to make friends. He's here to make money. Which was a bar. <laughs> <laughs> a bar. I'm like, well, I, I, I get it. <laughs> oh, and for people wondering why he didn't, like, destroy AEW on um, money. Like, it actually came out that they have, like, NDAs right now because they're still yeah. going through legal stuff from the firing. <laughs> Which is wild. Because I definitely thought he was going to get on the mic and destroy AEW. Like, he got on the mic. Destroyed WWE the first time he came back to uh, AEW. When you got but, lawyers involved, you can't right. say anything. <laughs> yeah, but like, are you also going to, is, is this going to be one of the first times where we see Phil kind of be the bigger person on this one? Mm. Like mm-hmm. Cody. Mm-hmm. Cody. Cody left WWE, or left AEW, mm-hmm. went back to WWE. They ha- even had that whole documentary oh, thing. Oh, that's another person that Triple H brought back. 
Cody Rhodes. After Cody in the very early, early AEW pay-per-views destroyed Triple H. Just <laughs> throw <laughs> with the sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, if we go back to the Cody returning, I, I remember all of us saying, is this how you get more AEW people to come back is by setting the example with Cody Rhodes. So far, it seems to be working. So the three people, Cody Rhodes, he was the first. Mm-hmm. I think we can all agree he's the top baby face in WWE. Mm-hmm. Yes. We can agree with that. Uh, the second one, uh, Jay Cargo, who we all said, because of politics, had never gotten the main event. Never even had a shot. And they lost, basically, their Bianca Belair. Yeah, he, yep, bingo. And then Phil Brooks, who we saw already talked about the most liked tweets on both things. He's still their highest, like, grossing whatever person, AEW. He brought in all that money. Mm-hmm. And now he's here, which is absurd. Wild. Yeah. Tony needs to get it together. Speaking of Tony, and pe- this person will never leave, but... Did you see Jay Car? Uh, not Jay Cargo. I'm sorry, she did leave. Did you <laughs> see Britt Baker's tweet? Yes. Yes. Like I saw that, and I'm like, "What?" The-? Oh, before I go to that, I just want to. CM Punk has been gone this long. Let me just read you some things that happened when CM Punk was last here. Yeah. Universal title didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Randy Orton was the undisputed WWE champion. Mm-hmm. Shield was in their first run together. All four horsewomen were NXT. Undertaker was still undefeated at WrestleMania. Finn Balor was still in Japan. Mm. <laughs> Batista just returned to win that Royal Rumble, which was... New Day didn't exist. His wife was the Divas champion, AJ. This one, you get a pop out of Jacob. Cesaro was still with Zeb Poulter. Oh, wow. we the people. We the people. Byron, how many tag team championships do the Usos have? Like 11, something like that? 10 or 11. Last time CM Punk was WWE, the Usos had zero titles. (laughs) Yes, movement was at its prime. Yeah. WWE 2K14 was only three months old. Rhea Ripley was in high school. Damn. The Wyatt family was in their rookie year. WWE Network hasn't even launched yet. (laughs) <laughs> Drew McIntyre was still in 3MB Dude, the greatest trio of all time <laughs> Speaking of, Bo Dallas was NXT champion And Kevin Owens wasn't in the company That's how long ago it was since CM Punk was last in a WWE ring That is insane Actually, the New Day statistic That I, they weren't a group yet? Dude, that Right, because it feels like they've been together forever Dude, forever like, I remember when they got together. I'm like, this is not going to work. This is the dumbest Same. thing. Same. Freaking nation of, of Kevin Owens right there. Nation of domination, <laughs> generic JD McDonough bullshit. But they made it work, man. They, John yeah. Cena was full time. Like, this is crazy. Now back to AEW. Britt Baker, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, had this tweet that's gone around. Has Last time I had it, it had 1.3 views. Tonight's AEW Dime Night. MJF, live promo time, 7 minutes. Kristen Cage, live promo time, 10 minutes. All of 2023 AEW Dynamite. Britt Baker, live promo time, 0 minutes. I thought she was lying. Like, I was like, the whole year? You've not? And I had to think, I was like, I actually don't remember. Uh, right. Like, I don't even remember the last time she was, like, on AEW TV. Which I think brings up a wonderful point. And this I, is your I, top girl. Right. This is your top girl. And I know like I I know like I'm odd man out on this one. I don't think everything is Britt Baker's fault. And I think that shows it right I there. don't think it is either. Not the like, Thunder Rosa, that's her fault. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. That is <laughs> undisputed. Absolutely. <laughs> That one's all. We need Triple H to mend those fences, all right? <laughs> he probably could. <laughs> but he probably could at this point. You know what? Good for Britt Baker shooting that one out. Because the one thing that always gets complained about constantly on this podcast is how terrible the AEW Women's Division is. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you know what? You need 
we need a divas revolution. That that's what that's what we need right now. Yeah, and during the thanks, during the Thanksgiving break, we did um me and Jacob we did give props to new Tony Storm, timeless Tony Storm, because mm-hmm. this one is significantly better than the whole AEW version because that was trash. Yeah. So this one she's dived into the character, so that one's really good. But Byron, this is crazy because I. This is your girl who's been with you day one. If you want to go back to old school, she's like Tony's Undertaker. She ain't going nowhere. And mm-hmm. zero promo time in 2023? That's wild. And, and I she's not injured. Right, not injured. Fully healthy. Like I said, I can't remember the last time she was on AEW TV. Last time she was on a pay-per-view was all in London. The women's title. But that's insane that your top woman has not had a promo in all of 2023 and it's now December 1st. And that's like, that'd be, that's the equivalent of Charlotte Flair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If Charlotte Flair has been gone half the year anyways, mm-hmm. but she's got more promo time than Britt Baker. That's mm-hmm. wild. Absolutely wild. Unacceptable. Yeah, there was people, I think Tommy Dreamer said on uh, his podcast or whatever, saying that Britt needs to take that tweet down because it could come problems in the back. I mean, Causing there, riffs. <laughs> there's been problems in the back so, of AEW since day one. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I don't throw another sprinkler on this fire. Like, oh, geez, is, is that another Bic lighter? Oh, no. It was just interesting because she's been so pro eight. Like, that was, I, I was she a shock. Is women's AEW. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, she is it. Mm-hmm. And it's just crazy. Like, it's for her to tweet that. Also, with, I feel like with AEW, too, obviously. MJF, he's not. I think he things already signed something. He's not leaving mm-hmm. or but whatnot. But do you feel like a little luster has come off the MJF thing because he's not real MJF, the asshole? Like he's been on this little face turn stuff. Do you think he needs to go back to that devil MJF who had one of the best entrances I've seen in mm-hmm. this past when he came on the throne with the devil mask? Mm-hmm. Like I was kind of thinking about that the other day. Like, uh, his face turn has been cool, like, with him and Adam Cole doing that thing before Adam Cole got injured. It was, like, amazing. I'm waiting for the betrayal. Someone's betraying. Like, who's doing it? Mm-hmm. And then, like, that, like in their matches, they have, like, those little instances of, like, them betraying each other, but then they don't fully do it. Like, that storyline has been amazing. Mm-hmm. And it sucks that Adam Cole got injured. Yes. In the middle of it. But, but one of them is injured, turning though. on each other, and I don't know who it is. Like, oh, Triple H got Adam Cole. That's, yeah. Which has probably been the best group in the past five years. Undisputed, Undisputed Era. Oh, yeah. yeah. NXT Undisputed Era, that was... And the crazy thing is... That was undisputed. <laughs> Adam Cole left because Vince McMahon wouldn't let him stream. Third-party ban. Third-party ban. One of our biggest wrestling podcasts ever. Fucking Let's bring ben. it back. Third-party <laughs> ban. Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, but, I don't know, I just... I feel like he's become stagnant as a face. So maybe he does need to go back to his heel devilish ways. Are you nervous Samoa Joe's going to beat him? Mm, not really. But it wouldn't... I love I love Samoa Joe. He's I one of too. my favorite. He can talk on the mic. He can wrestle. I, to this day, I still think he should have beat Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, Lesnar great balls of fire. 100% balls. agree. Yes. Yep. yep. That was a terrible... That's a terrible decision. But he, Samoa Joe lost his ROH title, right? Yeah, I don't think he has that title anymore. And he helped MJF. He's like, if I help you because Adam Cole got hurt or whatever, that right. I'll get a title shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think he just left in the ring. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that was it because that was a big deal. Everyone's... I don't know. I could see Samoa Joe taking it. It definitely would be shocking because. No one expects MJF to drop until he leaves AEW for WWE. <laughs> um, he, he ain't leaving. I don't think he's leaving. They're going to pay him. Yeah. If, he, if they have not already. Tony Khan needs to pay him after what happened to Cody Rhodes, Jay Cargill, CM Punk. No, he'll pay him. I mean, he obviously he paid a pretty penny for who I think is going to be the one who beat. Um, he got a penny for Will Osprey. Yeah, that's true. Will Ospreay is now. I'm sure he ain't coming here for a couple pounds, as they say. Pretty sure it was a lot. (laughs) But yeah, I think MJF needs to do a hill turn. There you go. 
I think we need to find out who the devil is. It is true. Well, it's not CM Punk anymore. It's, there was a lot of people who thought it was uh, Punk. <laughs> it's officially we have we have rolled out the CM Punk suspect. It's not Phil Brooks. Uh I've seen a lot of people saying it's going to be Britt Baker. Which okay. I don't know what the hell you did with that, right? Because she got some promo time. She's well, definitely <laughs> get some promo time, but like she's attacking. Like I can see. It being big breaker if she's like Man, attacking the women's division, on. Jesus. but she's she's been they've been attacking the men's division, so that's why I don't think it's Britt Baker. Some people are saying it's Adam Cole. Oh, that he was yeah. faking the injury. Yeah, I was just listening to MJF's theme like two days ago, and I was like, "Man, this shit's crazy." I still won't forgive Phil Brooks for uh not having that de facto match with MJF. Oh, I know. I would never get over that because that was going to be the ultimate crowning. Does MJF beat who? Dean John Moxley? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Captain America. You know. <laughs> Which he said, you don't want to know what I think about Phil Brooks' little promo on comicbook.com. Um, our favorite old man, Ric Flair, had a He's big back. tweet. <laughs> big tweet, Jacob <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Like I was confused. I was like, hey, people... he's gonna be he's gonna be here in Columbus tomorrow. He is. He is, man. Oh, nice. I'm not waiting in line three hours. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Ms. Jacobs referring to like we've already said earlier, GalaxyCon is in Columbus this weekend, time of recording. So Jacob um, is in town for that, and we're gonna be there. So it's gonna be a fun time. We're gonna hang out, maybe go to the same Q and A's, maybe get some dinner together after. You know, just hang out with. We don't get to do this very often, especially on the wrestling side. No. Yeah, but Ric Flair had that huge tweet. I don't know what he was talking about. I don't know who pissed him off. I don't even I, remember what the tweet was about. <laughs> he was just basically saying, guys, I know I'm old, blah, blah, blah. Can I not just be with my friend? Oh, Sting. yeah, friend Sting. Like, Ric Flair, we know you're trying to get a match. So it's, it's, a, it's a, ironic, mister. This is the beginning of the tweet, everyone. I am so tired of hearing all this negativity from Ric Flair. <laughs> I mean, Bro, your entire career was just one giant negativity heel move. I mean, you almost died the last time we saw you. Yeah. Dude, for yeah. real. You yeah. almost died. Um, but okay. Honestly, I I didn't even really believe I was I was working when Ric mm-hmm. Flair debuted and they're like, Oh yeah, we're signed Ric Flair. He's all elite. And it's like, What? I thought it was a joke. Mm-hmm. I legitimately thought it was a joke. And it's like, oh, okay, so we have Rick Flair here? I mean, like, that you'd think would get a special announcement on a Wednesday, but obviously not. That's crazy. I mean, I just, he, he can do what he wants, obviously, because that'll be a Galaxy Con. We've got over, over 95 million views, the most social moment in WWE history, CM Punk's Survivor Series debut. And just think about that. The most social moment in WWE history. I will. Like, I didn't think anything... I do happen. like how they've been doing this, as we're watching, um, you guys probably seeing. They've been showing all the live reactions from, yeah. like, people. I, I've watched some of them, too, on YouTube before WWE did that, but, like, there's ESPN talking about it, Sports Illustrated talking... Who else are they going to show? Fox, Fox News. News. <laughs> Shout out to Dave Oso. <laughs> USA Today. B- See, that's what I was talking about. BBC News, like, this is absurd. And then he comes down and talks on Raw. But, it, I, yeah, I mean, uh, he, as Roman Reigns said in the thing a long time ago, he's like, oh, CM Punk's not a needle mover. Well. Well. Bruh. Well. It, his fan base is just otherworldly. It's that, and I think it was just the the shock factor. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a, that, uh, me and my wife, we were talking about it. I was like, all right, once again, they're in Chicago when this happens. Every time he's come, the first time he came back in AEW, Chicago. When he came back the second time in AEW, Chicago. Chicago. And then Survivor Series, the return, Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> Sweet home, Chicago. Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens with this. Because we've seen this in AEW. Yes. When he came back in, in Chicago, woo, CM Punk. Mm-hmm. And then we go to like Kansas City, and they're like, and I don't like CM Punk. Screw CM Punk. We're gonna boom out of the building. <laughs> so it's gonna be interesting to see. We're gonna see like how like you know what's 
How long is the starstruckness going to last? Mm-hmm. We want to talk about how long this... This is all on Triple H. If CM Punk goes, hey, obviously Triple H is going to be Tony Khan feared for his life, but <laughs> what happens if... I mean, I've, I've read that CM Punk's been very humble in the back because he, he knows, man, this is really his last anything yeah. in wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Also, do you think do you think just the fact it was the Endeavor group? I do think that. I get. I, I think, think that's like to buy thing. Vince is more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think when you break it down to just money, how much money can I make off this? I feel like it's already paid itself off just with oh, the yeah. 90 million views. Mm-hmm. You can't get that. You can't pay for that publicity. Once I saw him on a WWE render, I was like, oh my God, this man's really back. Like, yeah. I, this is something I thought I'd never see. And then they, and then it was a crazy stat today because they've been going through CM Punk's like history. You know, they open up the vault, bringing mm-hmm. back all of his um, <laughs> matches and, <laughs> and all of that. There's just something so crazy. I just want to. Obviously, today's Friday. Mm-hmm. So they did the. His greatest match ever. Punk Cena, Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. Random Friday. A match from 2021. Had 12,000 live viewers watching it on WWE. That's crazy. In the middle of a Friday day. 12K live. Wow. Damn. Need a mover. That's, that's, that's impressive. On a work day? On a work day. On a Friday. Like, you're middle like, of a work day. It's impressive. And then let me just... Let me see if I can pull that up and be like, Oh yeah, this is how many... People actually don't know the sweetest of WWE because they've been putting all of his stuff like the Lesnar, um, mm-hmm. all of all of that jazz, like his all of his matches is just like dang. You know when you get kicked out, you're usually blacklisted. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they would. Yeah, they would shut down all the CM Punk chants. Where streamed was. eleven hours ago from right now. Anyone want to guess how many views is on it? So 12,000 while it's going on. I'm going to say at least a cool million. Okay. I'll take the over on that. I'll say I'll say 3 mil. No, no. You guys are both a little too high. Right yeah, now, yeah. currently, it's at a measly 567,000 views in 11 hours. Wow. So I'll probably be at a million by the end of... Because, I mean, but if you're... Everyone's seen that match. <laughs> Everyone knows where Everyone's to go. So it. it's like, why are you? It's already got over <laughs> half a million views. It's nuts. It's it's just wild, man. It's just like AEW. I mean, obviously they got their stuff too. I mean, Will Osprey is huge. Um, Red Breaker's tweet. I don't think I've. I think I'm more mad. What are you looking at? Keep calm. I'm the best. In the oh yeah, world. that was 2013. CM Punk scan. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, and then obviously if you then if you look behind you, obviously I had to get a piece of the ring when he won the 16th. But oh yeah, that was that was huge. I was like, shit, I don't even have CM Punk shirts anymore. I was like, right. I had to, oh, and talk about that. This is the first time in months. La Knight is not the number one selling person. It's Phil. Oh. Phil and Randy both. Dude, they like, they I, got me. They got me good with that Randy shirt. Dude, I said that mm-hmm. in the last podcast. I said, ah, oh, dude, they're just putting out the lightning bolts. Dude, this is such a wonderful job, WWE. It's it just got me. Shit is shit is crazy. Now going to this next thing. Cody Rhodes already, before December started, he's declaring for the Royal Rumble. Yes. We're already on the road to the WrestleMania. Probably this podcast, one of its favorite times of the year, because we're mm-hmm. really in it. And this may be the last one before we start talking about people, depending on schedules and all that. But Dragon Ball expert Mitch asked me if I was excited about Punk in general because of his backstage stuff. I was like, at first when it happened, I wasn't like, oh my God, my favorite wrestler is back. I was shocked because I never thought it was going to happen. What I told him was, I am excited about the Men's Royal Rumble. I don't know who's going to win now. Wow. Just assume everyone's in it. Cody already, he's, he's already said he's in it. Cody, mm-hmm. Punk, Orton, if Gunter's not doing an intercom, Gunter, Drew, main event Jey Uso, Triple H is going to work his mag, Lesnar's going to be back, mm-hmm. and all these other guys who, does AJ Styles, Styles, like all these people, Dude, this men's Royal Rumble has a chance to be generational. And I know I said that when we were first talking about it all fair. Like, 
I don't know. I don't think they have Cody running back. That's my thing. And if Cody doesn't run him back, who wins? <laughs> I mean, could could you see Punk win it, then turn around and face one hundred percent. That would be that quite the, the nice little swerve. One hundred percent. Oh, and that'd sell too with all the drama. Oh my oh, god! Oh yeah, sign me up. I want to watch a shoot wrestling match. But then we we talk about this stuff about the locker room. How mad would the boys be that two years in a row the AEW returner wins the rumble? Well, well, especially someone like Drew, who we are all pro Drew. Oh, but again, yes. we say it every time. Jacob had the best line to describe Drew. Right guy, wrong place, wrong time. I hate that you're right about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. He should have been champion the way one. over. Should have been champion at Clash of the Castle. Well. Again, solo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Roman Reigns is crazy, man. You got people on Twitter really debating who'd win in a wrestling match. Roman Reigns or freaking Goku. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone says Goku would turn around for that final Kamehameha. Solo's music comes, yep. Spike Spear, game over. <laughs> like, that's how big Roman Reigns' power is now. <laughs> Wild. So, I don't know, man. Like, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm, I'm so excited for this Rumble. Because I have. It's going to be a doozy. Like, it's going to yeah. be good. I have no idea who wins. And then, like, I didn't know before, but I especially don't know now. Because now you have, because you have three people have unfinished business. Drew's going to enter because he he wants to get to Roman. I'm just assuming. Mm-hmm. Randy right. already said he wants to kill every one of them. And Cody yeah. has unfinished business. Yeah, Randy has said on Monday. I've got receipts for everyone in the bloodline. You know what that receipt is? R K O. I'm like, well. <laughs> I mean, AJ has beef. And see, with all these people, we're not even talking about someone who just. Had his best match, L.A. Knight. Like, why, like you learn yeah, to like people dude. like that now. That's what happens when you get all these stars and you start forgetting about people. Like, yeah. Because before Punk, I was like, oh, L.A. Knight could be easily a top four person, then get eliminated mm-hmm. by the champ. But now I'm like, oh, dude, like you can you can probably narrow down like your your final ten. But then once you start, that's a chis- third of the rumble. It's a third of the rumble, exactly. <laughs> but once you start chiseling that down. Well, who becomes, you know, who becomes a fateful eight, you know? Becomes a final four. Final four. Who's the, who's the last three? Who's the last two? And that briefcase is still there, which is... Yeah. Because I think Damien will get a successful cash in because that man had to lose to Bad Bunny in Puerto Rico. So, great match. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. I mean, Puerto Rico is the last time Rhea had a challenge because she was going against Selena in her home country. Yeah. <laughs> Which I still think she should be alive. <laughs> it, it was too young and son um and Rhea's reign. There's no way she's gonna lose. But yeah, man, I'm thinking about this men's Royal Rumble. I mean, I'm like, dude, I don't know. Because what else is Triple H gonna pull? Right back. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. There's just so many. Because some people could screw these people, this people. I mean, like, there's even like I don't call them second tier, but like second tier people like a a Nakamura or like mm-hmm. oh your high end mid carders. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's all of them. Well, Nakamura just he's going after Cody now. Yeah. Which hey, that's gonna be good. That's, yes, gonna, that's gonna be good. Yes. Like if you think about like I, I can't look at it as in like present day Nakamura. I have to think of like Rosie mm-hmm. NXT Gold debuting mm-hmm. against Sami Zayn Nakamura. And it's like oh my god. What if Roman tells Jimmy and Solo, your goal is not to win the Rumble. Your goal is to eliminate the people who are trying to come after our livelihood. Ooh. Ooh. I can see that happening. Yes. That would be good. That means Co- that's how Cody would get eliminated. He'd get screwed by the bloodline. Randy would too. Randy. And if they got eliminated by the bloodline, and Drew. who really wins? <laughs> and Drew. Dude, man. Yeah, could you imagine if both Randy and Cody get eliminated early. They don't make the final four. Oh my god! Then I, I, would, I know my sheet would be wrong to hell. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but none of your confidence points. Oh, in, bro. In the no. bro right like the now. final four. Like if you don't have a Cody or a Randy, like because the Us, I mean because the Bloodline took them out. Like but then, let's say you got a Punk and you got an LA Knight. You got a Gunther. In the final three, I don't know where that crowd goes. Who do you? Like well, I, obviously, I'm not 
cheering for Punk, but obviously, yeah, obviously. I mean, but I'm a Gunter fan, massive Gunter fan, yeah. big <laughs> LA Knight fan. <laughs> you know, who do you cheer for? Who wins? Exactly. Oh. Because Roman's got to lose. He, yeah. We say that every I mean, year. Yeah, every <laughs> Does he? <laughs> Triple H is going to keep mending fences so Roman can get new people to, to that, that face. That might, that might be it. That, I, I don't know, man. And I also think with, like, I do. I, if night one is really Seth versus Punk and night two is Cody Roman 2, that WrestleMania is already sold out. Yeah. Now. Oh, easily. Yeah. Because you could have a fantastic picture. I'm not going to say this person's name, but I have to before this thing. You can have a picture like um, when Guerrero and Benoit won mm -hmm. and they clinked the titles together. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about selling to AEW? Punk and Cody clinking titles at the end of Sunday night? Ooh. That picture, I'd probably buy that one. Yeah. yeah. Then you're talking to people AEW like. I can go over there and win a title. Why am I back to back Rumble winners? Yeah, that too. Yeah, and we're not even talking about women's because maybe Jay does it. That would Dude. be wild. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Because the, the women want EO and um, Rhea. I mean, their champs. Yeah, their champs. they are still be champs. I mean, Becky. It's gonna, it's gonna be champs. Becky versus Rhea. Yeah, yeah, for the and or horsewoman woman era is gonna be back. Just telling people now. <laughs> <laughs> Becky no, will be. It's Becky. over. <laughs> when that right. match is announced, I'll tell you right now. I'm picking Becky Lynch. Put money on it. Facts. But if EO's champ, I mean, if Bailey gets her ass whooped and she goes face, maybe Bailey she's, versus she, EO. But then if, like, because Charlotte Flair's always in the final four, so you yeah. got to put her in there. Bianca's been in there. Bianca might take the title at the Rumble. She but might. Let's just say a final four of Charlotte's always there. Mm -hmm. Um, Jay Cargill, mm -hmm. Bailey. Mm -hmm. Who I mean, Charlotte's chasing history. Jade wants to make a name for herself. Bailey wants revenge because she's never won this. And then number thirty is the return of Sasha Banks. Oh, Jesus! And she makes it to the final four. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, she went from the very first row almost. She went from one to the final four. She was in the match the longest. She was a yeah. workhorse. I don't, I don't think Sasha would be coming back at this one because she's still injured. Yeah, she just, uh, started, and she imagine, just started working out. And then on top of that, I'm sure she's still under contract with Bushi Road, who owns New Japan. Bro, I, or, after what I saw with Punk, Triple H can pull off anything. <laughs> straight facts and buy out contracts. He might let, or he just lets her finish it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, like, the, but the, these rumbles, like, especially the men, the men is looking real interesting. Yeah. Yeah. On paper, men's looks way more interesting. Yeah. But, dude, they could do stuff without women's. They could. Yeah, they could, they could make that just... Even though these people, which I'm just going to quick shout out to them, they won't be at their wrestling things. Because shout out to Alexa Bliss and Tay Mello. Both just had their kids. They did. Carmel so actually had They her. will not be back anytime soon, which... I will say Byron Bronx, if Charlotte Banks does come back, whoever the next big woman return is, God, please go to Raw. <laughs> For real. <laughs> SmackDown is too, like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, Raw needs. The whole War Games match was all SmackDown besides Becky. Besides, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Alexa Bliss, when she comes back, she needs to go to Raw. Sasha needs to go to Raw. Carmella needs to go. Carmella needs to go to Raw. Liv, when she Crazy comes back, really Liv Morgan. Morgan. That's another person I could see coming back to win if Rhea's still champ. Liv yeah. Morgan. Yeah. Because they were the final two last year. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Um, Sonya Deville, when she's done being injured. That's true. She'll have to go to back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Whoever the next call ups are, because they got a lot of talent down there in NXT. Like we, I know Nina we Lyons just. I seen that she, can. she mm -hmm. just came back, and we talked about that. You know, long we did a pod of the rise and fall of the gold brand, and then once Triple H and them got back in there, it's like, oh shit, NXT's like, again. NXT has <laughs> really picked up yeah. a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. You know what I thought about from the men's perspective? Like, mm -hmm. what if Braun Breaker enters the Rumble? He he would get he would do really well. Yeah. He would he would be like when Keith Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, Keith Lee had you believe in he was gonna pin Roman Reigns a Survivor Series. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that was the greatest and that was the only match SmackDown or Raw Raw won 
because obviously Roman Reigns is in it. Mm-hmm. NXT won every other match. Yep. It's interesting, guys. I mean, that's we're on Rumble season. Cody said, y'all ain't waiting. <laughs> they said we're going to build up from now to the Rumble, which Triple H at the helm. I, I can see him doing it. What's going to happen? You know, something else, we talked about this, talked about Mania, Rumble, and everything else. We talked about this a long time ago when they split up the Usos. We're like, there's no way they could drag this out long enough to do a WrestleMania match. Here we are. And here we are. And it's like, oh, we could do a WrestleMania match easily. Mm-hmm. So right now, predicting if all goes, which now at Randy Orton and Punk, like this is interesting. So this is what I think the card would be right now. If Royal Rumble goes away. It's on with Jacob's thing. Okay. So Punk wins. Punk versus Seth. Main event night one. Okay. Because I, I doesn't ever would everyone want to see Punk versus Seth Absolutely. over Punk versus Absolutely. Roman? I've already seen that Punk Roman might be the main event at SummerSlam. Because then you have the thing with Paul Heyman. Like I can't wait for Punk and Paul Heyman oh, to see each other. Back I at, saw, oh, uh, shit, yeah. Like a mock up tweet that said CM Punk versus Roman for the custody of Paul Heyman. <laughs> <laughs> Which that might be how the bloodline of fishery breaks because Heyman goes back to Punk. Yeah. But I agree. Um, let's just say Punk, oh, Punk Seth, good. Punk Seth, mm-hmm. Roman Cody two, okay, uh, Rhea Becky. Okay. I'm a, I'm gonna throw this in here because I think it's gonna be time. Which you might saw the title, but whatever. Hopefully, this match is for the title. Gunter Lesnar. Oh yeah, that's what four or five matches yeah. already. Potentially Charlotte versus Bianca. Charlotte, which they've been waiting, they've been holding that one off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but now I feel bad for those ladies because y'all if, if it's Seth and Phil, y'all ain't main event in night one, ladies. You're, yeah. That's over with. <laughs> yep. Oh, and then Jimmy J. Oh, Jimmy J, yep. Man, that would be a ooh, that'd be a good card. Logan Paul versus LA Knight US title. That's when LA Knight finally gets a strap. That would be a good match. Dude, that's that's one of those things where like I'm just I I'm more excited for the build up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yes, I know the match would be good, but, you know, let me see that build-up. Yeah, because yeah. they both can talk in the mic. Oh, yeah, because yeah, also the main yeah. man, ch- main man <laughs> champ, Roman Reigns ain't coming back till the end of December. He's doing, like, two shows, and then it's Rumble time. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm never, I can't wait to see when Roman comes back if he talks about CM Punk. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's going to be so high. He's like, every time I leave, some crazy shit happens. <laughs> All these people are chanting for LA Night now, and now <laughs> Punk is back. I left. Randy came back. CM Punk came back. Our truth is now here. <laughs> He's offering me Doritos and Twinkies. Oh, Anything else, guys? Uh, oh, well, we have went over a lot of shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're in Rumble season. Is there? I don't know. I gotta look up. I gotta see if there's anything else going on. So far, Bailey is still technically in the damage control. Oh, she's about to get kicked. <laughs> you know, no one's kicked out of the KOD. That's impressive. They Good. protected that move. Good. Well, oh, that's it. That's oh, easy man. money. <laughs> Kyrie did not kick out. <laughs> Fun fact. Um, I don't think of anything in like AEW. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. I, uh... Oh. CM Punk's promo on Raw. Do you guys believe him when he said he's a change man? No. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. But like, mm, CM Punk, I don't know about that, but we'll see. Um, we shall see. Nah. He's that not. was a good promo. I'm not going to lie. That man can talk on the mic. Yep. Randy Orton decides what company... Hey, yo! <laughs> oh, Randy Orton decides he's going to be on SmackDown or Raw? Oh, he's going to SmackDown so he can mess Kill with the blood blood blood. Blood. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Jimmy going to come out, talk smack, and going to get RKO. <laughs> What's about that? Oh, uh, you know what? It's, I, I keep seeing this thing keep going, making its way around the internet. This is the time we bring back these Stone Cold sessions. Oh. I have heard some people say alternative night one, Punk in Austin. I don't need respectfully. That might have to be night two. The problem is, like, it's n- it's just not going to be the same. Is I know it's, it's 2012. Yeah, CM Punk. Yeah, because all I can think about is WWE 13. Yep. That, oh, I love. I've watched. Oh my god, I love that promo because this starts getting serious. I'm like, wait, 
this getting personal? <laughs> Dude, yeah. Like it, I'll settle for a broken skull set. I would settle for a punk um punk skull session. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Stone Cold would ask him, it's like, so did you really like put Jungle Boy Jack Perry in a headlock? Like <laughs> Were you really pissed off because of that Gladden bot? I, I I don't know. I did see he did a little vip, victory lap thing. Shout out to the EVPs of AEW. Also, have you guys heard about the like they keep removing the EVP title from the Young Bucks? Uh, well, I mean they haven't done a great job in that role. Like they remove it and then they add it back and then remove it again. So I'm like, what's going on? Bro? Remember when they got suspended and had to lose their trios championship? Man, life is crazy. Because of CM Punk. <laughs> and then he had to drop <laughs> his title. Life is wild. Man. But we got we got a Death Triangle trio championship out of that, and that was good. Yeah. It is funny, man, just how things just change so yes. much. Yes. Because like, God, I mean like Everyone was just so behind AEW, mm-hmm. and now it's like we you can't do it. We can't do a podcast without some sort of backstage drama <laughs> of <laughs> AEW every freaking time. I think they're gonna get some help back though. Well, I don't know if they're gonna even use her because I mean, Jamie's coming back. She was a mm-hmm. champ. Yeah, yeah, and and that'll be good. But at the same time, so what? You're gonna have. Christian Cage should not have more promo time than MJF. When I, that actually pisses me off. Listen, he's got a lot of kids right now. I hate I hate to quote Heath Slater hit here, but he's got kids. I damn it, <laughs> he's got kids. Nick him and him and Adam <laughs> having their little feud. I'm like, damn, what is this? O two. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it is kind of funny when you think about it. Single run Christian is so much better outside of WWE. Just like yeah. single run jog Max Moxley. Yeah, yeah. Like he, he not talking tag teams, but just single runs. God, he does amazing work outside WWE. I think that goes with like other sports or other places. Like there's just one place you were just it just clicks for you and more than it does the other. It just mm-hmm. it is what it is. And there's some wrestlers who are generational who can do it anywhere, like an edge. Edge, yeah. Yep. Oh. No. Because, God, I'll never forgive them for when they said, oh, we have a generational signing, and it was Christian Cage. <laughs> Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame like, caliber. I was like, okay. But now he's doing good promo work. Like, he, just, just, he, he is. Yeah, that, he his is. stuff has been pretty funny. Like, the yeah. memes about, like, if he finds out that you're fatherless are just so great on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, he'd have to see me. <laughs> like, like, he talks so much shit, but, no, nah, that's good. I mean, they got... Every, as we said, Jacob, man, wrestling is booming. Like, this oh, is a, doing a United States Championship tournament. Hey, Karrion Cross is still a thing. Ooh, Karrion Cross versus Bobby Lashley. I'm taking Bobby Lashley. Oh, all That's day, cool. every day. <laughs> Dragon Lady versus uh, Escobar? Oh, it's got to be Escobar. Yeah. Oh, we've seen this. Actually, oh, would that make sense, though? <laughs> I feel like it would make more sense because you have Bobby Lashley and Karrion Cross who are both heels. Oh, shit. Sam Punk returns. Oh, Sam Punk's going to be on SmackDown next week. Be on SmackDown. Gotta get on there before Roman comes back. Well, facts. <laughs> <laughs> I just see he might be a, a free agent type, which they do for the, those two. But... Do you think they do like the countdown? For like when he comes, like how they did the Cody countdown. For yeah, the I can see him doing that stuff. Yeah, that was... Well, with Punk being back, it gives Cody a break because with Roman gone, Cody was having to do all these damn shows. I hear Not he's sure. still the dark main event for this show too. Oh, Cody is. <laughs> oh, is anything else, guys? Uh, yeah. With that Not being s- with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L Seven C podcast, the first live wrestling one. Uh, I was really fun actually doing this live and. Hopefully we'll get to do this again. Grand SummerSlam in Cleveland. We're waiting for that announcement. Um, with that being said, we are on the road to the Royal Rumble, and we'll be back. L7C Podcast signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.